The song says, and you can tell it to people next to you. Forever God is faithful. Amen? Forever God is strong. So I encourage each and every one of us, whatever we are going through right now, whatever season of life we are going through right now, whatever burdens, concerns that bothers us, we may not feel the faithfulness of the Lord this very moment, but that does not discount the fact that forever God is faithful. Amen. Amen, church? Forever God is faithful. You know one thing that the Lord taught me this week? No matter how I love the Lord, I cannot boast of it. I cannot and will not ever boast the lo my love to the Lord. Because you know why? It always fails. I'm always unfaithful. But if there is one thing that I can boast of, the love of the Lord to me. Amen? Because the love of the Lord to me, He is always faithful. It does not fail. Amen, church? Hallelujah. Let's stand up and let us welcome the word of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Our main passage can be um, uh, found in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 1 and 2. This is the word of the Lord. This is how one should regard us. As servants of Christ. In other translation, it says in there, ministers and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of steward that they may be found faithful. Forever God... Our faithful Father, thank you very much for gathering us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have shown, and thank you for everything that are yet that you are yet to show us, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us a brand new lease of life. We pray that we may offer that life back to you, that we may use that life in a manner that pleases you, Father God. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come here to stand in the presence of your congregation, Father, as well as those people, my dear brothers and sisters that you have used today. Thank you, Lord, even those people joining us online. Thank you, Father, that we can have this opportunity, that we can enjoy this moment with one another and most importantly, with your company. As your servant says earlier, where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. And thank you for this opportunity, Father. Lord, thank you that you are going to be our teacher today. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are going to unfold, that you are going to unpack your words for us today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that every words that we will hear, that we will receive from you today. Thank you, that we will keep them in our mind, that we will keep them in our heart, that we can jot them down in our notes. And thank you that you are going to give us opportunity to go away and study them, Father God, to confirm that the message that we receive truly comes from you. Thank you very much, Lord. Lord, we cannot do this in our own. We can only do this and we can only operate according to the power that you have bestowed us. Lord, we humble ourselves down and we are excited for all the learning that you are going to teach us today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Are we excited to hear the word of the Lord today? Are we excited to receive from the Lord today? Siguro the more fitting question nearing 12 o'clock is, are we hungry? Amen? Who is hungry here? I am hungry. The question is, what do we want to eat? Porridge or steak? Daniel, what do you want to eat? Porridge or steak? Huh? Are you sure? <laughs> what do we want to eat? Porridge is for breakfast. It's uh, dinner time. Or in our Filipino language, it's lunch time. 
So, what is fitting for lunchtime, Daniel? Porridge or steak? Steak. Do we all want to eat steak today, my dear brothers and sisters? Apostle Paul says that there will come a point in our life that we need to start eating steak. Amen. That we need to start eating meat as opposed to depend only to the milk. Amen, church? Because eating steak shows that we are growing in the Lord. We are maturing in the Lord. Amen. You cannot feed a baby a steak, otherwise they will choke. But if you are ready, you know, um, uh, the first time that we came here in the UK, um, uh, and we take the children out, usually the, we fed our children. You know? But we went to this restaurant and they sat the children on this high chair and they just dumped the chips and the ketchup and everything in there and <laughs> the children end up messy but I know they enjoyed it. So I thought that actually that's a good practice to do. Amen? That shows that you appreciate that the babies, your children are growing. You appreciate that um, uh, the babies are gaining and learning skills as well. Amen? So my dear brothers and sisters, in this passage that we read this morning, no, in as much as, you know, so much I tried to avoid this message, um, uh, the message that was supposed to originally prepared for this week was um, uh, making our appointment with the Lord. But this message keep on coming back the whole week. And uh, yesterday, our uh, family Bible study um, uh, this is one of our topic. Kaya sabi ko, Lord, thank you. I know that there is a reason why you are giving me a one hour extended because the Lord wants me to read and receive the message in here so thus I can share it to all of you guys. Amen. So, in the original context, when Apostle Paul gave this message to the Church of Corinth, Apostle Paul is discussing, Apostle Paul is talking like him and this other Apostle Apollos and between the church of Corinth. But my dear brothers and sisters, that was the time when the Bible was not yet written or at least the Old Testament was not yet written. But now that because of that letter of Apostle Paul to the Corinthians, this message now becomes message to all of us. Amen church? This message now becomes message to all of us. And it says in here that this is how one should regard us. This is how should we regard ourselves. Ganito po natin dapat tignan ang ating mga sarili. This is how we should see ourselves. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, this is how you should regard me. And me, this is how I should regard you, vice versa. As a believers, as people called by the Lord, this is how we should regard ourselves. And how should we regard ourselves? It says in here, we should regard ourselves as servants of Christ. We should regard ourselves, in other translations, as ministers of Christ. We should regard ourselves, it says in here, as stewards. In other translation, managers of the mysteries of God. Later on, I will show you, we will show you why we became like this. So my dear brothers and sisters, for all the believers, it says in here that we are entrusted a mysteries of God. Amen? There is a mystery of God. Why did Apostle Paul during that time said it was a mystery? Because prior to the people, the people of the Old Testament, they did not see this. Hindi nila ito nakita. Hindi nila ito naintindihan. They did not see this. They did not read this. Although they read it. Later on, we will say that they read it. They heard it. But they did not understand. So it remains a mystery. And now, Apostle Paul came says that this is the mystery of God. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, there is such called a mystery of God. 
Well, to you and me, it's not a mystery anymore. Because why? It was revealed to us. When we receive the Lord Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, it is no longer a mystery to us because it was revealed to us, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? And Apostle Paul said that there is a mystery of God. It was revealed to us, this mystery of God. And how should we regard? How should we Acknowledge, how should we treat these mysteries of God? Sabi niya doon, let us be a servant of this mystery. What does a servant means? Servant means serving a specific purpose. Amen. Minister means you minister a specific purpose. Steward means you look after, you are entrusted with the specific purpose. And then again, that specific purpose is the mysteries of God. Amen? Wow. Brothers, no? I'm very blessed with these uh, four fellows. So next time that you talk or after, you talk about that. Oi, brothers, we are entrusted about the mysteries of God. Amen? So let's step a little bit further. Not only brothers, brothers, but brothers, we are entrusted of the mysteries of God. Amen. And as one being entrusted, it says in there, we need to serve what we were entrusted of. We, we need to minister that, that what we are entrusted of. We need to be a good steward of that what we are entrusted of. Because if we are doing that, Apostle Paul says, we are a faithful steward. We are a faithful servant. We are a faithful manager of that mystery. Amen, church. And for 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, it says in here, Amen, this is our calling from the Lord. This is the reason why the Lord called us. This is the reason why that you and me exist. We were talking about, this is a recap of what we have been talking about, that what is our purpose in life. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, it says in there, He has saved us, or God. God saved us and called us into a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose in grace. Yan po yung prophetic message natin through Ate Grace, Sister Grace kanina. That we were saved, not because of what we have done, but because of what the Lord has done, what the, the grace and the mercy of the Lord to us. Amen? So, God has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything that we have done, but because of His own purpose in grace. This grace was given us in Christ just even before the beginning of time. Amen? Wow! How lucky we are. Because even before the beginning of time, the Lord knew that we will be a recipient of that grace. Amen. Amen, church. Even before the foundation, the beginning of time, the Lord knew that a man called Trevor will come to him, will be a recipient of his grace and mercy. A man called Taman, Alan, William, Lester, Ramon, and these four fellows in here will become a recipient of His mercies in grace. Amen. Amen. And guess what? Each and every one of you. Amen, Amen church. Amen. But my dear brothers and sisters, it says in here, our calling is a two-fold calling. The Lord called us all to come, step in, and be saved. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. The Lord calls us in to come and believe and be saved. But the Lord is also calling up us to step up. It is not just stepping in in faith. The Lord is also calling us to step up in faith. Stepping in in faith is to be saved. Stepping up in faith is live a holy life. Amen. When we receive the mystery of God, there is that calling when we were saved. We were entrusted of that mystery. 
but serving that mystery. In uh, ministering that mystery, being a steward of that mystery in a faithful manner, it says in there, that means that is leading the holy life. Amen, church? So my dear brothers and sisters, let our coming to the Lord is not going to be a half-bake. Because it's in as much as masarap ang cake, if it is half-bake, no one will touch it. Less sumakit yung chan mo. Kaya nga yung mga nagbibake, nang una, kala ko, bakit may toothpick na patusok-tusok pa sila ng toothpick nang nalalaman pag nagbibake sila. Because that is the only way daw pala to find out if the inside is baked. And if it is a half bake, no one will eat. Baka sumakit ang tiyan nyo. Amen. So even with our faith with the Lord, it should not be a half bake. It is not enough that we believe in the Lord. It is not enough that we profess our faith in the Lord. It is more important na ilakad natin yung faith na yan. It is more important that we live a holy life. Matthew 28, 18-20, sabi niya rito, Jesus came and said to all the people, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me even before the foundation of the world, Jesus said. I have the authority. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Ano yung sabi ni Jesus Christ? Go therefore and make disciples of all the nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go therefore and cause people to be saved. Amen. Go therefore and work out for people to be saved. <coughs> but that is not enough. Sabi ni Jesus Christ rito, teach them to obey. All that I have commanded you. Amen. Because if you do this, lo and behold, I will be with you always until the end of age. If you want to stand with the Lord up until the end of age, it is not enough to receive Him and be saved. You need to live a holy life. Amen, church. It is not enough for us to receive the Lord. It is not enough for us to profess our faith with the Lord. It says in there, making sure that we are observing everything that the Lord has commanded us. You know, and every commandment in the Bible, even we said natin, even with argument sake, ah, that is the Old Testament. Every commandment in the Bible is given in one purpose, in order for the recipient to lead a holy life. That is the reason why that the Lord gave the commandments to the people of Israel in the time of old is that these people may walk with the Lord. Amen, church. So, ganun din po sa atin. Let us lead a holy life. Amen. So, what is entrusted to us, entrusted to us is the mysteries of God. By the time that we receive the Lord Jesus Christ, we become a servant of that mystery. We became a minister of that mystery. We became a steward of that um, uh, mystery. Amen. I'm very blessed today because this message is, it is a message and it is a Bible study at the same time. It is a message for us to open our eyes, but it is a Bible study at the same time in order for us to learn more about that mystery. So my dear brothers and sisters, I want us to pay attention. Balikan natin itong message na to. I-save natin itong message na to. This is, this is one of the many messages that will lead us how to build and conduct our life. That, how to build and conduct kung papaano natin i-build up itong church na ipinagkatiwala ng Panginoon sa atin. It says in the next slide, my dear brothers and sisters, it says in here, we are entrusted of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Amen? Next slide. Amen, church. We are entrusted of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So this is your Bible in summary, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen?
E yung makikita natin, yung flat line in the middle, that is our timeline. Amen? And makikita natin doon sa right, right, far right, dito sa akin, we can see that's the power of the cross. We can see that Jesus Christ died and rose again. And after that, we can see that the church has been born. A time of the church. Amen. And we can see, my dear brothers and sisters, that at the uh, ta end of the time of the church, rapture will happen. That's what the revelation says. And then after, uh, 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 simultaneously on that rapture, there is going to be a seven years of tribulation. Dito na ba, darating, lalabas yung Antichrist, the 666. Amen? And at the end of that seven years, we see, we know that this is the second coming of Christ. This is now the second coming of Christ where Jesus Christ will come and will destroy all those kingdoms remaining during that tribulation. And after that one, Jesus Christ will reign There is going to be a 1,000 years of peace and prosperity up until the end of that when the devil will be freed again from where he was kept for a thousand years. And then the final battle of all battles will happen. Amen. So this is the mystery of the kingdom of God, my dear brothers and sisters, na tinanggap natin. na sinasabi niya rito sa mystery na ipinagkatiwala sa atin. The first mystery, my dear brothers and sisters, take down note, it's not there. You can find it in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It says in here, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. It should not cause controversy to us. It has already caused controversy because a lot of people do not believe in this. And without controversy, great is the mystery of the godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, sin of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Amen. So the first mystery, my dear brothers and sisters, that is talking to us, that's number one, even before Jesus Christ came, Even before Jesus Christ was born, even before Jesus Christ uh, was crucified, it says in here, my dear brothers and sisters, that He was God manifested on the flesh. From the beginning of time in the Garden of Eden, He was God. Amen. God became flesh. and dwelt among us, and that who Jesus Christ is. It causes controversy because a lot of churches right now, they do not believe in the Trinity. They do not believe in the godliness of Jesus. A lot of churches right now, they believe that Jesus is just a mere servant of God. Jesus is a mere prophet of God. Although they said Jesus is a son, but He is not co-substantial with the Father. Mababa lang siya kasi anak lang siya. But that's not what the Bible says. So that is the first mystery na itinuro sa atin mga kapatid ng salita ng Panginoon na dapat nating paniwalaan that there is a thing called Trinity and Jesus is a part of it. That Jesus is God came in the human flesh. Amen. And Jesus Christ came, my dear brothers and sisters. And the second mystery, sabi niya sa Colossians 1.26 to 27, even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from the generation, but now is made manifest to His saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. So eto mga kapatid, the mystery of God indwelling in us 
in the personhood of Jesus. Amen? Ito yung second mystery that God came to dwell with us and His name is Jesus. And He gave up His life in that cross. He died and remained on the grave for the third day. And on the third day, He rose again. Amen, church? That is the second mystery that God in the form of Christ came and dwelt with us. Amen? And even in the same thing, my dear brothers and sisters, amen? The same thing that uh, Jesus Christ remain to dwell with us in the presence of His Holy Spirit. You know, the other name of the Holy Spirit in Romans 8, 9 is He is also called the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. Galatians 2, 20. I have been crucified with Christ. Therefore, it is no longer I that live But the crucified in recent Christ dwelt in me. So my dear brothers and sisters, the third mystery, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 5 and 6, which was not made known to the sons of men and other generation as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, member of the same body, and partakers of the promises of Christ Jesus through the gospel. Amen. The third mystery is the church, my dear brothers and sisters. Because before the church, everything is all about the Jew. Amen? Everything is all about the Jewish. Salvation belongs to the Jews. God is for the Jews. Kaya nga even Jesus Christ said that it is not good for the food, for the bread to be given to the dogs. Because Gentiles were considered dogs last time. If you are a Gentile last that time, you do not have a hold, you do not have a bearing in the kingdom of God. But glory to God in the highest because He reconciled the Jews and the Gentiles of which we are part of. Amen. That's, that's the church age where there is no more Jew, there is no more Gentile, but one new man. Amen, church. And my dear brothers and sisters, we live in the time of the church. Guess what? What comes next? What comes next, my dear brothers and sisters? What are we now waiting to happen? It can happen any moment. It can happen even this very moment. And that is rapture. Wala na pong kailangang mangyari. There is nothing else that needs to happen before rapture comes. Rapture is very eminent. Rapture is very eminent, my dear brothers and sisters. Basahin nyo na lang po, if you want to learn more about the rapture, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51 to 58, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. And that is the fourth mystery that there is a time called rapture where all the believers in Christ will be caught up in the air and met with Jesus Christ in the air. Amen, church? Guess what? Simultaneously what happened to that rapture? Romans chapter 5, that is the fifth mystery. Romans chapter 11, verses 25 to 26. Lest you be wise in your own sight. I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery, brothers. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentile has come. Until the fullness of the church age has come. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the Deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. So mga kapatid, on that fifth mystery, it says in there that the Lord will return His focus to Israel. Kaya, if you are one of the church or if you are reading, sometimes 
the study about the rapture is quite confusing as well. You need to pray for the revelation and the power of the Holy Spirit to understand. Sometimes it's very confusing because there are other churches, many churches that believe that rapture happens at the end of tribulation. That rapture happens in the middle of tribulation. Why is it important that rapture will happen before the tribulation comes? Because the purpose of the tribulation, my dear brothers and sisters, is God focusing His eyes again to Israel. God is focusing His eyes again to people. Whereas we are in the church age whereby God in the form of Jesus Christ extend that salvation to us Gentiles. So when the fullness of the time of the Gentile comes, it says in there, God will refocus His sight to Israel. And if we, if you read on that first Corinthians and that first Thessalonians, it says in here that rapture only comes if he who is the restrictor will be taken away. And who is that restrictor? The Holy Spirit. You know, before Jesus Christ came, before Jesus Christ was revealed, if you read the Old Testament, Holy Spirit comes in and comes out. Diba? Makikita natin in David, in Saul, in uh, Jeremiah, in Joshua, they have an engagement with the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit enters and the Holy Spirit goes away. But when Jesus Christ came, Jesus said that do not live, wait for the promised Holy Spirit. That's why that number three mystery, because Jesus Christ dwells with us in that form of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit now comes, He did, do not just come in and come out. The Holy Spirit now lives around us. Furthermore, the Holy Spirit lives in the heart of the believer. Again, Romans 8, sabi niya dun, if you do not have the Holy Spirit of Christ in you, then you are not a believer. You are not saved. That is the mark of being a believer, a mark of being saved. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, why does rapture happens before the tribulation? Because the only way that the Antichrist will be revealed if the restrictor is taken away of the picture. Who is that restrictor? The Holy Spirit. What does that Holy Spirit empower? The church. Kaya nga during the tribulation, yung sasabihin ninyo na okay lang, pag dumating na yung Antichrist, pag dumating na yung tribulation, doon na lang ako mananampalataya kay Kristo, doon na lang ako iiyak kay Kristo, doon na lang ako magpapakumbaba kay Kristo. It's not gonna happen. Because you know why? What caused you to believe now? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin. The Holy Spirit convicts us of the righteousness. The Holy Spirit convicts us of the coming judgment. If there is only one that caused us to receive and accept the Lord Jesus Christ, hindi po yung minsahin ng pastor. Hindi po yung Biblia na binabasa natin. Lest the Holy Spirit comes. Amen, church. Ngayon pa nga lang na nandito na ang Holy Spirit. Ang hirap manampalataya ng tao. Look at what is happening around. Is there faith around? Is there faith in the world? Ang dami nating pinag-usapan dito kahapon kung how other uh, churches na how do they uh, self-interpret yung pagmamahal ng Panginoon. And as a believer, again, we cannot preach half-baked. Hindi natin pwedeng i-preach lahat na mahal ka ng Panginoon, mahal ka ng Panginoon, mahal ka ng Panginoon. Kailangan din natin i-preach na namumuhi ang Panginoon sa iyong kasalanan. Amen, church. Mahal ka ng Panginoon, walang makakapigil dyan. Nothing can separate you from His love. But, namumuhi ang Panginoon sa iyong kasalanan. Wag po tayong mag-preach ng half-bake. Amen, church. Kaya nga sabi niya rito, during the tribulation, the Lord will send direct from heaven two witness. Makikita nila may, may dalawang witness na bababa direct from heaven. People believe it. 
that it is going to be Elijah and Enoch because the Bible says it is destined for man to die once. Elijah and Enoch did not die. They were taken straight away from heaven. So believers believe that this is Enoch and Elijah coming down from heaven to preach. Why do they have to preach? Because the Holy Spirit is not here. But after a certain time, they will be killed by the Antichrist and the Antichrist army. So my dear brothers and sisters, if you are in the tribulation, mahirap nang manampalataya during that time. How can you give your faith to the Lord? Buntis ka? Pupunta ka sa ospital, sabi nila, if you do not have the mark of the beast, the 666, you cannot have checkup. Bagong panganak ka, kailangan mong bumili ng milk formula sa iyong baby na iyak ng iyak. You know, the most difficult part sa mga magulang, yung umiiyak yung anak nila na wala silang magawa. Amen, church. Amen. Kung ikaw, gutom na gutom yung baby mo, walang makain yung anak mo, hindi ka makabili ng pagkain less, magpatatak ka. Magpakatutuo tayo, magpapatatak tayo o hindi. Anyone? Papatatak tayo. Hindi ka pwedeng umuwi sa Pilipinas kung wala kang bakuna. Ang ginawa ng tao. Nagpabakuna. Amen. Kaya nga, we were talking about, mga kapatid, yung the revelation is, hindi naman ibinigay yung message ng revelation para takutin tayo. Ibinigay yung message ng revelation to prepare us ourselves. Amen. Sinishare ko sa mga kapatid na nandirito. This week, I came across yung video ng meeting ng mga world leaders sa Dubai yata yun or sa Abu Dhabi. Basta sometimes somewhere in the Middle East. The meeting of the world leaders. Alam nyo yung napag-meetingan nila? Sabi nila, the policing of America is no longer effective. Because nakita naman natin that after World War I, America took the duty na sila yung maging pulis ng buong mundo. Diba? Sila ang tagapagtanggol. And they said that the policing of America is no longer effective. Countries are no longer listening to them. With the pandemic that is happening, that has devastated the economy, with the war in Russia, that is devastating the economy, what did they propose? The solution is, we now need to establish a one world government. We now establish a new world order. Who's the proponent of the new world order against the revelation, my dear brothers and sisters? Remind me who? The Antichrist. It says in there, up until now, Paul said, the spirit of Antichrist is at work. Amen. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. But the Antichrist will be revealed after the rapture. And the rapture will come soon. What did they say? These leaders, they are very upset that there are countries that try to, uh, ano na yun? That try to control the economy. Just like Russia and Saudi Arabia because they have a reserve of gold. And whatever it is that they do, it depress economy. What did they say? It is about time for us that let's break the regional division of monetary currency. We need to put in place a one world currency. Digital money. My dear brothers and sisters, that's what all the tribulations tells us. Kaya... My dear brothers and sisters, the mystery number six, Revelation 17.5, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlows and abomination of the earth. If there is the church of Christ, if there is the bride of Christ, there is also the church of the devil. 
where the Antichrist is at work. If the church is the bride of Christ, the devil's church, it says in here, the whore, the mother of all the whores, the mother of all the harlows. I do not want, I do not want to come out of my mouth. But if you are a Bible reader, you know what is that devil's church? Wag tayo magplastigan. Who's that? The Church of Rome. I'm not, I'm not uh, scared and I'm not uh, ano, to tell that. Because that's what the Bible says. The Church of Rome. Do you think the Church of Rome serves the purposes of the Lord? No! Nag-uusap kami ni Ate Alice kanina regarding an activity that is coming. My dear brothers and sisters, if Paul, Peter, Mary is walking with us at the moment, do you think they will agree for us to make a statue for them? Would you think? No. And why do we make one? What did the disciples said when they saw Jesus Christ? And Jesus Christ was standing with Elijah and with Moses. And what did the apostle said? That let us build a tabernacle, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Did Jesus Christ say, yes, you make one? No. Kaya mga kapatid. And I mean, did, this did not come from my own. If you read the Bible... And you really read and study the Bible. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Kaya, the reason that we said this is, marami tayong kapamilya. Marami tayong kapamilya. Mga kapatid, that's the reason why you are entrusted these mysteries of the kingdom. Kasi maaatimba natin kung yung ibang tao, ati ani, kung yung ibang tao bibigyan natin ng trucks, Kung yung ibang tao ipag-pre-pray natin na masave sila. Why don't we start with our parents, with our brothers, with our sisters? Not everyone. If you are called for the loss outside, yes. But a duty of each and every family member, just like that jailer, when he met the Lord, what did the jailer do? He took home salvation to his house. That's why Paul said that believe and you and your household will be saved. Sapusin po natin. Second Thessalonians, the final mystery for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Ito nga yung spirit of Antichrist. Only he who has restrained it will do so until he is out of the way. Amen. The spirit of Antichrist, the Antichrist will only rebuild once rapture happen. Because you and me knew about the message of the rapture. Amen, church. My dear brothers and sisters, during the time of Noah, for a thousand years, many laugh at the message of salvation. Many mock the message of salvation. Are we going to commit the same mistake that they have done? Sabi ko nga, if the Lord is not true, if life after death is not true, then there is no loss for us. We will both die. We will both go in the same place. Wala palang Panginoon eh. Wala palang life after death eh. Pero papaano naman kung totoo? Amen, church. Ano yung sabi ni Brother Ramon nung Friday? Again, it is not, uh, we, we, it is not uh, a good analogy, pero it's still an analogy. Lucky na, in Nuevi ka na nga, hihirit ka pa. Diba? Wag naman. Nandirito na tayo. Nakapasok na tayo sa first step calling ng Panginoon. The Lord called us to be saved. And nakapasok na tayo dyan. What is the second fold of that calling? We need to 
live a holy life. And this is the reason why this mystery is revealed to us. Amen. This is a mystery because it is only revealed to the believers. This is a mystery, but for the believers, it is no longer a mystery because these are the basic foundation of our faith in the Lord. Amen. And ano yung sabi niya doon? How do we treat this mystery? We need to treat it with faithfulness. Amen, church? We need to treat it with faithfulness. Hebrews 11.6, it says in here, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because everyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. The root word of the root word faithfulness is faithful. So my dear brothers and sisters, it says in here that everyone who comes to God, that everyone who profess that God exists, that everyone who comes and say that, Lord, I am a believer, I am a Christian, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior, sabi niya doon, it is impossible to please God of all those without that faithfulness in us. And it says in here, He only rewards us because of that faithfulness. Earnestly seeking Him, meaning mga kapatid, faithfully seeking Him, diligently seeking Him. Amen, church? It is more than the way we profess faith. It is more than the matter that, Lord, I have faith in you. It is more than the say that, Lord, I am a believer. Lord, I want to be saved. Lord, this is my desire to be saved. It is more than coming to the Lord in prayer. It is more than coming to cry to the Lord. More than believing that the Lord exists. Sabi niya doon, you will only be rewarded if you earnestly, if you diligently, if you faithfully seek Him. Amen, church? Hallelujah. Ano po yung faithfully na sinasabi natin dito? Ano po yung earnestly, ano po yung diligently na sinasabi natin dito? It is a matter of commitment. It is a matter of constancy. It is a matter of being consistent. Hindi po sala sa init, sala sa lamig. You know, remember the Church of Laodicea? We studied the Church of Laodicea before in Revelations chapter 3. They were a lukewarm church. They were neither cold nor warm. And what did the Lord said in verse 16? Because you are neither cold or hot, I am about to spew you out of my mouth. I love you, the Lord says. But I do not condone your sin. I'm about to spew you out of my mouth. Papaano naman, sabi niya rito, how about those people that say na, I believe the Lord is blessing me. I believe na I am walking in the path that the Lord has given me. This is the sign this is the justification. Ano po yung sabi niya rito mga kapatid? You say that you are rich, I have everything I want, I do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are rich, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. What profits a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? Mga kapatid, every time na naririnig natin ito, you know, we are very quick to interpret about earthly, king, uh, earthly richness. We are very interpret to say that, oh, this is about earthly richness. This is about storing um, uh, richness here in this world where it gets stolen, it will rust. But, you know, this is the same revelation that the Lord gave uh, to Sister Michelle this morning. No? 1 John 5.21 that 
Keep away from everything that will serve enmity between you and the Lord. Everything that will serve as an idol. Everything that takes away your time to the Lord. Everything that will take away your faithfulness sa Panginoon. It is not all about money. It could be your phone. It could be your games, brothers. Amen? It could be your games, brothers. It could be relationship. It could be family. That's what the Lord says. That anyone loves their family more than me, they are not fit for my kingdom. It could be work. It's not always about the wealth. Anything and everything, mga kapatid, na it will stop you in being a faithful steward, in being a faithful minister, in being a faithful uh, uh, servant, mga kapatid. Especially na we are walking in the end times. Rapture is here. I just want to end here. Sorry, it's faithfulness. Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 to 16. Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 to 16. Sabi niya rito, The disciple came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? Jesus replied, The knowledge of the secret of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. There are certain part of the people of the population that the, the mystery of the kingdom was given to, but not to all. Sabi niya doon, the reason that I speak in parables is because the mystery of the kingdom has been given to you and not to them. Whoever has will be given more and he have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will still be taken from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. Ito yung sinasabi ng Panginoon, though seeing they do not see and though hearing they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophet, the prophecy of Isaiah that says, You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, the encouragement. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and I will heal them. My dear brothers and sisters, in the life of a Christian, faithfulness is as equally heavy as salvation. Because salvation, my dear brothers and sisters, that does not stop there. We need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. First Peter 16, sabi niya dun, mga kapatid. Amen? That we need to walk in a manner of holiness. Amen po. Again, my dear brothers and sisters, to sum it up, it is not just a matter of coming to the Lord and believing to the Lord. It is more than just a matter of coming to the church, more than a matter of being part of a church, more than a matter of being called a Christian. It is more than a matter of the pastor, the, pri the priest, or the ministers, the vicar, to preach the word. More than a matter that the leaders, the teachers teach, more than a matter that people come to the front to pray, to exhort. More than a matter of all the songs and musical arrangement that we prepare. More than a matter of our wishes, our desire, our calling, our talent, our skills, our giftings. It's all about faithful steward kung ano po yung ipinagkatiwala ng Panginoon sa atin. And that is salvation. 
and that we need to walk in that salvation. And we need to share that salvation to others, mga kapatid. It is just a matter about that mystery where God brings us deliverance, where God brings us salvation and restoration. Amen. Amen, church. We need to serve. We need to minister. We need to be a steward faithfully. Amen po. Because sabi niya rito, we cannot serve, we cannot minister, we cannot be a steward of, of something that we do not have in us. We cannot serve, we cannot minister, we cannot be steward of, of something we did not receive and accept in us. Hindi po natin pwedeng magamit ang isang bagay na wala tayo. Kung wala kang sasakyan, hindi ka naman kukontakin ni Ate Alice para sabihin na ihatid mo nga ako sa airport. Kung wala kang oven, hindi naman siguro natin ikaw hihingaan na mag-bake ka naman ng cake. In the same way that we will never ask something that you do not have. Mga kapatid, the encouragement in there is, you do not have it. Ano yung sabi niya dun? Come to the Lord. Sabi niya rito, come to the Lord that you might see with your eyes, that you may hear with your ears, that you may understand with your hearts, and turn and I will heal you. Amen po church. Ayaw nating matulad sa Matthew 7:21. That everyone, not everyone who calls to me Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who actually do the will of the Father in heaven. Ano yung will ng Father in heaven natin? Faithfully living a holy life. Sino po yung nire-reward ng Panginoon? Sabi niya sa Hebrews kanina. Those who faithfully and diligently seek Him. Amen, church, mga kapatid. Let us ask the Lord. Let us ask the Lord. This is a perfect and wonderful opportunity that, Lord, thank you because you have revealed another part of your mystery. It could be that that is the first time that we have heard of that today. But that is the reason that we can learn and we can come to the Lord and say that, Lord, I learned. Lord, I want my eyes open that I may see. I want my ears open that I may hear. I want my hearts open that I may be attentive to you. Amen, church. Na yung paborito nating litanya, Ecclesiastes 9.4, habang may buhay, may pag-asa po. Amen, church. While you stand here, while rapture is not yet here, while the Lord does not demand your breath back, may pag-asa. At sabi ng Panginoon, if you hear the word of the Lord today, do not harden your heart kasi hindi mo alam. Kaya nga sinasabing pag-asa dahil hindi naman forever nandyan yan. A lot of people gambled with their pag-asa and they lost. So mga kapatid, let us change, let us turn our ways to the Lord. Sabi nga natin, the Lord is faithful. Amen, church? Amen. Kung wala tayong faithfulness, kanino tayo hihingi? To the one who has a vast supply of faithfulness. And that is no other than the Lord. Amen, church? Lord, there is no faithfulness in me. Father God, I cannot boast of your love because it always fails. But Lord, top me up with your faithfulness. Top me up with your love. Merciful Lord and loving Father, I want your grace once again. Amen, church. Let's bring in the music team and let us ask the Lord. Let us ask the Lord. Just like King David, when King David, during the time that he was so down, that he was so low, that everything that is happening around him seems not going on in his plan. What did King David said? He did not came to Samuel, 
the prophet, and as a prayer. He did not came to someone to as a prayer. Sabi niya doon, David strengthened himself in the Lord. Lumapit po tayo sa Holy Spirit. Let us come to the Holy Spirit. Let us cry to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's stand up, church, and let us cry to the Lord. Let us let the Holy Spirit minister to us. Let us desire the Holy Spirit to minister to us. Siguro for the first time, I'm not gonna be moving around. I'm not gonna be asking someone to come in the front. Let us let the Holy Spirit flow and minister to us. I myself want to come to enter into the presence of the Holy Spirit and ask for that faithfulness. Ask for that mercy. Ask for that love. Ask for that forgiveness. We sing Welcomes me the kindness of mercy.
brings a fearing. Yes, oh Jesus. Lord, I will remember. The Holy Spirit is moving in our midst, church. Fill him. What Calvary. Welcome him. Has brought for me. Open your hearts. Open forever. Holy Spirit, come in our midst. God, you're so good. Holy Spirit, come in our midst. Oh God, you're so good. Allow us to recognize good. and realize how good you are. Yes, God. Stay with on this line until God, open heavens. You're so good. Do not cease to declare the goodness of the Lord God, up until your situation, so good. until your tide you're has so turned around, good. up until good you receive the promise of the Lord, up until God, you receive your so the faithfulness of the Lord. Oh God, you're so good. Come on, people, lifting God, declare how good He is. God, you're so the salvation of your partners. The Lord will cause the salvation of your children, of your brothers, of your sisters, of your entire family. Be faithful to Him. Trust in Him. Be a faithful servant of the mystery that He has entrusted you. 
is gonna be faithful at your work. God is gonna be faithful in the process that you are going through. God is gonna be faithful in your sickness and illness. Healing, deliverance from the Lord. If ever there are vicars, priests, pastors, ministers, servants of God, that you are burned out, that you are tired, that you cannot move forward any longer. If ever there are ministers out there that has been constantly rebuked, that has been Constantly rebuke. I want to see, I want you to know that the Lord is faithful, that the Lord is so good in your life. Hang on in there. Deliverance is coming. If there are chair churches that are struggling in there, continue to be faithful. Continue to be faithful. The goodness of the Lord is coming. Any family, any family that's been divided by circumstances, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. In that illness, in that sickness, paralysis, stroke, Back pain, heart problems, diabetes. Brain problems, meningitis, tuberculosis. The Lord is so good. The Lord is so good. And to all of you who are going through struggles, all of you who are worried about the economy, to all of you who are worried about finances, to all of you who are worried about any other else, I want you to know you can trust the Lord. He is so good. I want you to know that though you are old, though your age is advanced, the best days of your lives are yet to come. The best days of your lives are yet to come. The current challenges, the current trials, the current tribulations is in no way in much for the future glory, for the future blessings that the Lord has prepared and has mandated for you even before the foundations of the world. Lord, we pray for that son. We pray for that daughter. We pray for that children, Father God. Restore their faith in you. Bring them back to the folds of the family. Bring them back to the folds of the church. And Lord, to all the people here in Seor, and all the people who are joining us online, I pray, Father God, for that spirit of commitment to be upon them. I pray, O oh God, that as they have learned about your mystery, that, Lord, may we be found faithfully serving, ministering, stewarding the unction that we have received from you. Lord, may your body may Christ is our rock church Father God support their pastor support their leaders support the ministries Father God support one another in order for us Father God to materialize what you have called us for to do Thank you, Lord, because you are going to teach us over the coming days. Thank you, Father God, dahil ikaw, yung aming foundation. And thank you so much, Father God, because...
five years after laying down the foundation, thank you that you will allow us to dig in, Father God, and to rework that foundation na walang iba kung hindi ikaw lamang, Lord. Maraming salamat, Father God, because you have revealed the secrets of the mysteries of your kingdom today. And thank you because you are giving us that life conviction from the least to the greatest, from the greatest to the least. One, not just to be a partaker, Father God, of that mystery, but to serve, to minister, and to be a steward of that mystery faithfully, Father God. Maraming salamat, Panginoon. Pinupuri ka namin, itinataas namin ang iyong pangalan, Lord. Lord, may your name be glorified upon the life of my dear brothers and sisters. Alam mo, nakikita mo po, Lord, yung kanilang iyak, yung kanilang pagmamahal sa iyo, Lord. At kung may kulang pa, Father God, Lord, be our teacher. Turuan mo kami, Father God. But more than that, Lord, convict us to have a teachable heart. Convict us to have that submissive heart, Father God. Maraming maraming salamat, Lord. We take authority over all the works of the enemy and we break every yoke. We break every stronghold. We break every sin. We break every spirit, Father God. Every idols. Everything, Lord, that takes our time away from you. We bind them and we bring them into submission to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. Let's continue to enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for His good and His love endures forever. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your love. It endures forever. Hallelujah. To the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. Above all things, love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. With the mighty hand and outstretched arms, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever.
love endures forever. His 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 love endures forever. Endures forever. His love endures forever. Love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is Thank you, Lord, for His love in George forever. Amen. Forever, forever. Bless God bless everyone. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Hallelujah.